Hi, welcome to Revival Cycles Tech Talk. I'm Stefan, and today we are talking about brake lines. So we've got a kit that allows you to build your own brake lines. And the main reason that you'd want to do that is because by building your own brake lines, you can get the routing exactly the way you want and the length exactly the way you want. You can test different configurations and make sure that it's perfect before you commit to a specific length and a specific set of fittings. So this system lets you take care of that. In addition, it also has a little bit of a performance advantage in that the smaller diameter line actually moves the fluid through the line quicker, which makes it easier to bleed your brakes. The faster speed through the line gets the air bubbles out, the fewer air bubbles in your system, the better the brake lever feel is. Also, the small diameter means that the force in the line under braking is actually a little bit lower than a conventional line, even for the same braking force, and that means that there's less line flex, again, contributing to better brake feel. Um, so the heart of this system is basically the hydraulic lines, which both of these are stainless steel braided lines with a PFTE liner and a PVC coating. One's clear and one's black. That's the only difference there. Now we've got a few different types of fittings which come in two different colors, uh, stainless steel and black. And then there are three styles, which is a straight fitting, a 20 degree fitting, which has a slight bend in it, and then a 90 degree fitting, which has a 90 degree bend in it. So now that we've kind of got an overview of how the system works and what the system is, I'd like to show you exactly how to install one on a bike. So the first thing you need to do when you're assembling this kit is determine which fittings you want to use. Take a look at your master cylinder. Figure out how you want the lines to leave the master cylinder. On this bike, we've used a 90 degree fitting and that brings the lines into the center and then they can split back out to go to the dual caliper setup that it has. It's also worth mentioning that these lines work great for hydraulic clutches. With the top fittings determined, you want to come over and take a look at the caliper and figure out which fitting is going to work best down here. On this bike, we're using a 20 degree fitting. It brings the line just a little bit away from the fork uh, because a straight line, a straight fitting, would bring this directly into the fork. A 90 degree also would work, but it would bring the loop out a little too far away from the fork and we just didn't like that appearance. After you've determined your fittings, you want to figure out how much hydraulic line you'll need. So you can measure that out with a piece of string or maybe a piece of tubing, uh, even just a rough estimation would be fine. But when you make that length determination, try to account for the preload that you have in your forks. You want to make sure that at full extension, this hydraulic line doesn't get too tight. You also want to double check that you don't have any interferences um, or complications with the steering lock. So you want to move the bars side to side, make sure that whatever routing you've decided on works in this situation. Now that we've picked out the parts that we need, we can actually assemble one of these lines. All right, so now you've got your fittings selected and you've got a rough length of hydraulic line that you're gonna be assembling. So why don't we go ahead and show you how to build this. First thing we're gonna do is prepare the hydraulic line uh, to accept this fitting. And what I'm gonna do is actually trim a little bit of this PVC coating back using a knife. Uh, being careful to not damage the stainless steel braid underneath, just kind of Go around. It doesn't take much force. This PVC coating is, is really quite soft and should just peel right off. Now, when I trimmed that, I made sure that the length was just right so that I don't have a gap, but I also have come right up to the threads of the collar nut. You want to make sure that the line is completely inserted into the collar nut, but you also don't want to leave a large gap here. A little gap is fine, it's really just a cosmetic issue, there's no safety concern, that's not even correct. If you had a gap, that wouldn't be a problem, it's just we like to do things perfect every time. So now that we've got that trimmed, you want to insert the end of the fitting into the inside diameter of the hydraulic line and try and get a couple of threads to pick up. All we're really doing here is just making it easier to catch the, the liner after the collar nut is in position. So I'm just kind of flaring this out with the, with the end of the fitting and then I'm going to try and just get a couple threads to start. All right, there we go. And back that off and put the collar nut in position. Now, in order to get a better grip on this, I'm going to coil it up so I can hold on to it. And then all we really do is just thread this in. I'm putting a bit of pressure down the fitting to, to make sure that the threads are actually going into the tubing, 
and it's not just pulling the tubing up. It doesn't take too much force, but it helps to have a little bit of hand strength. So now we've got the first set of threads engaged with the inner tube, and now we're about to engage the second set of threads, which actually pick up in the collar nut. And between those two threads, that's what actually locks this assembly together. So just keep twisting. Keep twisting. Now, I recommend that people practice this assembly once or twice before doing the final assembly, and that way you can get everything just right. The one thing that you need to note is after I've assembled it to this point, if I need to disassemble this for any reason, it's necessary to trim the hydraulic line back and start with a fresh section. Once it's been installed once, that's it. You have to take it all apart and start over from scratch. So, there we go. We've just about got that down. And I've left a small gap between the collar nut and the fitting. And there's a reason for that. You wanna have uh, between zero and one millimeter of gap. Really, you just don't wanna bottom this out. If you bottom it out, there's a chance that you could put too much torque in and actually damage the fitting. And if you leave more than a millimeter gap, it's just not really installed completely. So you want to have about one millimeter gap down here. And it also leaves you a little bit of flexibility once you go to install it on the bike. You can change the orientation. You can rotate this just a little bit to get the clocking perfect. So, all right. So now we've got half of this line complete. And uh, at this point, what you'd want to do is go back to the bike and install this either at the master or the caliper, whichever one you started with. Uh, go through the routing that you've chosen and get this positioned to where the next fitting is going to be. And you're going to need to trim some of this off. Uh, trimming is not difficult. You just use a set of side cutters and trim that off. When you do that, it's going to smash the end making it difficult to start the next fitting. So just use a set of pliers and gently squeeze that so that it goes back to round and it should be no trouble to start that other fitting. Do the other side the same as the first and the other line will be complete. You might still be wondering, is this system even safe? And the manufacturer has tested this to 10,000 PSI. And if you think about it, the typical braking loads or braking pressures in a motorcycle system are around 800 PSI. And on certain conditions, you might see as high as 2,000 PSI in like a panic stop or an emergency stop situation. So even in the worst case scenario, you still have a five time safety factor. So the system is actually quite safe. We've used it on all of our customs. We've never seen a single failure. And considering how easy it is to assemble and how flexible and universal this system is, it's our solution for brakes every single time. With all our products, we want to make sure that you get it done right. So if you have any questions or any concerns about your application or your installation, give us a call, send us an email. We're always here to help. And thanks for watching.